This is one of those rare moments for me where I can honestly say if you told little gay Chris at 15 years old that he'd one day interview the person who played someone who represented survival and uh, perseverance to him, he wouldn't have believed you. Wow. Wow, honey, thank you. Yeah, do you get that from, you must get that from gay boys. You must I do, I do, but it's always really lovely. It means a lot. Yeah, did you ever expect that you would reach that demographic when you did the first Scream movie? I had no idea what demographic I would reach. Honestly, I had no idea of the success of these films or the impact that these films would have on people. I mean, listen, it was, it's an honor to play such a, such a strong woman and someone who's not a victim and someone who takes over and, and holds her own and won't allow life to get away with her. Um, but to, to realize the impact that has on other people's lives and that it's had a positive effect on people is just like the cherry on top, right? Yeah, of course, it must be. I don't know. I don't play Sydney, but I can expect, <laughs> I can assume that it, mu it must feel that way. I mean, there is something yeah. to be said about, you know, we feel this way about Jamie Lee Curtis, obviously, as well as Laurie Strode. Um, and I don't know how much you've kind of dissected this relationship between strong women and the gay community. I don't know how surrounded you are by gay men or queer people in your life. Um, yes. But I am sort of just curious to know uh, what, what your perspective is on that. Why scream queens like yourself are revered so much by, um, by seemingly gay men in particular? Yeah, I think, and, but also I think it's not just gay men. I think it's people who have felt shut down in some way in their life or felt that they, they've had to sort of push a glass ceiling or been misunderstood or been bullied or, you know, I think, um, so I think it makes sense for certain, certainly the, the queer community, gay men, but I think also just for anyone who's is struggled with um, bullying or, or challenges in, in their youth, especially, I think. Um, uh, yeah, marginalization, yeah. suppression. Um, it's, yeah. it's the underdog rising above. Yeah, but. absolutely, absolutely. And as Sydney does that, or Laurie Strode does that, gives people that confidence that they can overcome. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I told you it did that for me when I was a teenager. I um, love it. I yeah, love it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's always a real treat to see you back in that role because, you know, it does this sort of thing where I'm I'm 39. Um, but there's a part of me that feels the same way that I felt when I was a teenager, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you sort of carry that trauma with you. Of course. And, you know, you play this character who carries this trauma with her. Yeah, absolutely. And, at, you know, I think we all had some level. I certainly had a level of bullying when I was a kid and, and struggled a lot. So, you know, perhaps that comes through in the character, um, you know, and of course that that is carried with us for the rest of our lives. But it's it's sort of not letting it live you. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? That can be your history. We can put that 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 can just be a part of our tapestry, um, yeah. but it doesn't have to be our present story, you know? Yeah. I love that. And, you know, without saying too much about the new Scream, um, there is this uh, idea that you, I mean, it is recognized in the movie that you are inspiring other young people. Yeah. We can say that yeah. much, right? Yeah, which is lovely. I mean, what's, you know, as I'm sure you know, what's great about these films is they're very self-referential and they take a, look, take a look at the genre itself. Then they start to take a look at the characters within the film becoming, you know, icons themselves or characters that are portrayed in films. And so there's always a level of that. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'm happy that Kevin Williamson recently divulged how the screen movies are coded in gay survival. Uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. it's it's obviously something that we have known for a very yeah. long time. And um, knowing Kevin and knowing his identity, I always figured yeah. that it was. Uh, <clears throat> did you know from the beginning that Sydney was a manifestation of of Kevin's personal experiences as a gay man? Not necessarily. Um... I think you always know that a writer is writing from something personal, some kind of experience that they've had. I mean, good writing is always com comes from something <clears throat> intimate or meaningful or, a, you know, a part of a person's story. So there I had suspicion, but he'd never said it clearly to me. Yeah. Had there been conversations on any of the movies following the first movie, given the fact that now he's opened up about it? I just we wonder. We were just talking about it. I, we were actually just talking about it at a dinner a few weeks ago. Um, and it was really the first time he revealed it to me that 
succinctly. Um, and I think he's become clearer about it as well, you know, over the years, probably because he's been discussing it and talking about it. Um, he's able to express it more clearly. Yeah. Does it have you sort of reinterpreting Sydney and what she means and what she stands for um, when you think about it through his very specific lens? Um, no, I don't think it would change my portrayal because inevitably my portrayal came from the words and came from, you know, a, a, a pained person, a person who was damaged, a person who was troubled, who's trying to overcome. So whether that be gay or straight or whatever, I think it's, it's a very similar story, you know? So yeah. I don't think the portrayal would need to be different. Well, I guess not the portrayal so much as going back in your mind, right? Oh, and like yeah. looking at her differently, knowing this information. Mm. Well, I think only because of people like you, I've had a sense of that already. You know, I've had a sense of um, the impact that she's had in that way and that she touches people in that way. So I can, I can in looking at the films, see those moments where that would have that impact. Yeah, yeah. There's this part in the movie where um, she says, I'm bored. Um, and I think that like is so funny because it really is what you feel when you've gone through so much and you're like, come on, I've yeah. gone through this. <laughs> Do better. <laughs> Been there, done that, seen it before. Come on. <laughs> really, give me more. <laughs> really, really good. Uh, I bet that cracked you up when you read that in the script. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Um, I, uh, I obviously talked to a lot of queer friends of mine before I got um, on video with you and, uh, and they had a lot to say about the character as well, but a lesbian friend of mine wanted me to ask you, uh, what do you have to say for yourself for bringing out all the baby queers in the 90s? <laughs> very proud, very proud of it. <laughs> Listen, you know, I grew up in the dance world, so I was at the National Ballet School by the time I was nine. and. To be honest, the majority of the boys in my class were, were gay, you know, and um, because they're, they're, a lot of your community are drawn to the arts and drawn to that world and feel more accepted and are more accepted in that world. Um, <clears throat> so that's been my upbringing. And also I grew up in Toronto, which I think is second highest gay community in North America. <laughs> so <laughs> That seems about right yeah. based on my visits to uh, my, my, my many visits to Toronto. So, yeah. Right, right. I love yeah. Toronto for that, you know. Um, so listen, if I've had an impact in that way on that community, it means a great, great deal to me. Yeah. And let's note here that like, it's not just with Scream, but the craft too. Craft as well. I know. You know. Okay. Yeah, so I know. <laughs> when, when a queer person comes up to you, you know, do they tend to mention scream? Do they tend to mention the craft? Do they mention and wild things? And when will I be loved? And you know, there's, there's a slew of movies. Yeah. Oh um, yeah. Wild things. Of course. I'm sure my lesbian yeah. friend saw that. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's, uh, yeah. I get, I get a whole bunch of different ones to be honest. Yeah. Um, there, uh, there are so many theories about Scream. I'm sure you've heard them all at this point. Uh, but there's one in particular that um, I wanted to ask you about, but this sort of dynamic between Billy and Stu mm. in the first Scream. Do you know where I'm going with this? Yeah, are you wondering whether there was a, rela a burgeoning relationship, love, love, love <laughs> relationship going on in there? Of course. Perhaps, perhaps, yeah. I mean, it's very much a possibility and now that Kevin's out and talking more about that I would imagine that's a big part of his thinking yeah um where when you say perhaps what makes you think that it's possible I don't know clearly because no one Kevin hasn't said to me clearly that's what it is but it is a possibility right yeah but if you were to theorize like hypothetically looking back if I were to theorize um I would say that there was perhaps some confusion with them <laughs> um Pretty confused. <laughs> Pretty confused, guys. <laughs> and that might, and that maybe some of their anger comes from not being allowed to be who they want to be. If mm -hmm. you want to go there, what do you think? I want to go there. And yeah, I mean, you know, in the second scream, there's mention mockingly of like repressed, a repressed homosexual being the killer. Um, yes. You know, even though it's said jokingly, right? But it's still sort of nod to like what we've all been thinking. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that maybe Stu is, is hotter for Billy than Billy is for yeah, yeah, Stu. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yes. Okay. 
Okay, thank you. Well, it's been it's been confirmed. You know what? I talked to Kevin on Monday, but if Nev says it, then <laughs> then it's truth. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> oh my gosh, um, I've just lost all train of thought. I got so I love <laughs> I love that so much. Um, oh, but you know, I think the important distinction here, though, to note is that uh, we may we'll never know. You know, maybe Kevin will confirm this. Uh, but, you know, the first film was what they say queer coded, right? And uh, we don't live in a wor world anymore where that's acceptable, right? Um, we don't do queer coding anymore. Everything is now uh, text, not subtext. Um, yeah, yeah. Which is something, obviously, that I really appreciate about the new Scream. Um, and uh, I, I guess I wanted to know your, your thoughts on seeing the progress that we've made throughout five Screams, right? Um, and here we are, and we have an, an openly same-sex character where it's completely matter-of-fact. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Well, thank God, right? I mean, uh, we, we needed to get to this place where it, it just becomes fact, and it just becomes truth, and we accept the fact that, that we're all different, and we're all here, you know? And yeah. we, don't, we don't need to pretend that certain groups don't exist anymore. Um, so it's, it's great progression. But at the same time, I was reading in an article on BBC yesterday that that um, I don't know if you know this Bert and Ernie cake in Ireland that was ordered. Do you know this story? And um, and it was it was it was a man who wanted to have a birthday cake and have this Bert and Ernie represent his his gay openness and strength and the bakery refused to uh, make the cake for him became a big court case and he won the first court case but he just lost the second so you know we're not we're not necessarily there yet in every, obviously in every country and and hopefully that will shift in the future but at least in some places it's getting better yeah 100 percent um i think there's a lot of work still to be done um you know i think that these are important steps culturally speaking i mean you know going back to what i told you at the beginning right um the influence that a film can have on a young queer person yeah. um think about how many how many people like me there are in the world who are young who will see yeah. this movie and feel like wow i'm on screen right? yeah absolutely and being represented clearly and openly and without shame yes, yes. beautiful yeah. thing um, well, I think to just end, I need to acknowledge, this isn't even a question, but I just need to acknowledge that seeing you and Gail, mm -hmm. two tough women, kick ass together, is pretty much like every gay man's dream. Um, so <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you for bringing that to the screen. And, um, and thank you for you know, thank you for these movies. I mean, uh, they're really, you know, they're horror movies and, uh, but they're life changing to a lot of people, um, in ways that I don't know if you would have thought about when you first made, made that first scream. It doesn't seem like it. So. No, there's no way I could have comprehended I know. for sure, but I'm certainly really grateful for it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you, Nev. And thank you. Uh, I hope that, you know, I live in Michigan, um, and you filmed the fourth one here. In Ann Arbor. Yeah. And I used to live there. I lived there uh, a couple years ago. I liked Ann Arbor. Ann Arbor's a very cozy yeah. uh, college town. Yeah. Where are you in Michigan? Are you in Detroit? or? I'm now close to Detroit. Yep. Uh, I grew up close to Northville, which is where uh, you had shot the, uh, at the coffee shop. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My parents met in Windsor, just across the border. Oh, yeah. I used to go there to drink when I was not old. Uh, I'm sure. <laughs> when you were 19, right? <laughs> 100 percent. Oh, that's am that's amazing. I mean, yeah, like that's a 30 minute drive from you. Yeah. So yeah. awesome. Well, uh, thank you again. I really appreciate your time. Very grateful. And uh, and uh, yeah, we'll we'll see each other hopefully down the down the road. All right, honey. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You take care. Okay. Bye bye.